What's up good people, my name is AJ and I'm here with a little bit of a throwback story video on when I took the Series 7 specifically to get licensed for the financial regulatory exams in the United States. So this was in 2016. I had been working uh, just out of college in the job that I started out in for a few months when I started studying for the Series 7. And it's the general licensing exam to be able to provide investment recommendations. And then there's one afterwards for investment advice in the United States. It's a little bit different now. There's like an entry level exam, the SIE, which is half of the seven. And then another exam still called the Series 7, which is the other half of what used to be the Series 7 from what I understand. You can use this information in your own situation equally for both the SIE exam and the current Series 7 exam. But with some of this, understand that time was a factor for me because with my employment contract, I had some compensation tied to uh, getting licensed for the Series 7 exam. So there was some motivation to get it done relatively quickly. But I also think the timeline here that I'm gonna share is not too out of the ordinary from what most people should try to be targeting. Cause when you let this thing go like four to six months, I think that's just too long of a period of time to spend studying for that exam specifically because of some of the oddities that you'll run into in the municipal bond section specifically. I'm gonna talk about here how I passed the exam. So first registered for it online, you had to be sponsored. I think you still have to be sponsored for the current series seven exam by an employer. So my employer, you know, filed that information with, uh, with FINRA, I believe, to, to sit for the exam. And then I also signed up for exam prep course through uh, KEER. And the name of the course, I think, was like Smart Success or, or Smart Pass Series 7. I remember the study material books had like an owl with a target, bow and arrow hitting a target or something with an owl on the cover, but it was from KEER. And I exclusively studied with that material. My study process was really simple. And if you've watched any of my other videos on studying for the CFA exams, this is gonna sound pretty familiar to you. The most important factor I think in studying for this exam or many others is your schedule. Because I think if you don't set a strict schedule for yourself, then you're gonna allow yourself uh, some leeway and you'll end up skipping some study time that you should have spent studying, doing other things, Netflix or hanging out with friends or whatever and that's just gonna diminish your ability to pass it on time or just pass it at all. So I uh, recognized that from the beginning and I put together a schedule that was going to work with the compensation schedule that I had set up through my employer, but also I knew it would be effective for me to be able to pass the exam. It's really straightforward. I think the series seven exam had like eight sections or something at the time. And I would go through the hard copy book of the uh, study material from Kira that I had and the way it was structured, I would do three hours a day. So that's a really important point with my schedule. I just did three hours every night when I got home, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. after work was uh, my ideal study hours. Sometimes it was a little bit after that. And on Fridays at the time, I forgot about this, but it's worth mentioning. I wasn't as busy at my job because I was in an entry level role. So Fridays, I had the entire day at work to study. Again, my employer had a vested interest in me being able to pass the exams so that I could do a lot more servicing work with them. And so they gave me eight hours, you know, all day long, maybe nine hours with lunch Fridays. And then when I would get home Friday after work, I didn't have to study, which was a nice thing to have early on. But most days, three hours, Fridays, eight or nine hours. I would just look through the book, you know, chapter one, page one. I would read it all the way the book was formatted is you'd read probably anywhere from two to 10 pages. And then there would be a handful of practice questions about what you just read. Take the practice questions. Hopefully you did fairly well if you didn't. Um, look at what you got wrong, scroll back in the text, figure out what the right answer was and why you got it wrong, learn from it, okay? Uh, next chapter, you know, same section, but next chapter, uh, you know, read through those pages, practice questions done. And then of those eight sections, each one took maybe four or five days. So every four to five day period when I would finish the section, I would have a chapter review on the website through my test prep provider where I would go in and do a longer um, 20 to 30 question test over the questions over that past chapter. It's really not hard once you're systematic about it to make sure you're getting all the information into your brain that you need and that you're remembering it pretty well to be able to pass on the exam. I think I found the material my test prep provider was providing me with to be a little bit harder, actually a, a, a fair amount harder than the real exam was. I scored an 87% on the series seven exam and it's a fairly long one. I think it was six or eight hours, uh, but it was felt exceptionally easy just because of the preparation you know, uh, before that exam. I had finance background from college or university, but the questions in the series seven really weren't all that applicable to what I had studied in college. It was really just the six weeks of study 
through the test prep provider that prepared me well enough to be able to pass the exam on the first attempt. It'd be worth noting too that really I was done studying after about five weeks and in the last week of my studies I wasn't taking it as seriously anymore because I had done a few practice tests by that point that I was scoring like 80% and above so I knew I was good I just had to schedule a time to get to the test center to actually take the exam so I think a four week schedule would be pretty realistic um, and then if you want more time two to three months is probably the longest I would push out studying for the series 7. I mentioned I felt like the exam was pretty easy and most of the information in the series 7 is pretty straightforward except for one chapter in the fixed income chap uh, fixed income book which I think is the second book out of the seven or eight in the municipal bond chapter there are so many crazy rules and regulations that you've never heard of and you'll never hear of again for the rest of your life but you have to remember for the Series 7 exam. So really abstract stuff about little municipalities and what types of uh, general obligation or revenue bonds they're, they're allowed to issue and contingencies on how those bonds can get sold to the public. I don't really remember exactly uh, the details of those questions, but I remember a couple of those topics. And they're super foreign, really abstract pieces of information that you're never gonna need to use, but that's the reality of that test. So. I think I spent more time on the municipal bond section than most to make sure I had those rules down pat. And that's kind of what you have to do with maybe any exam is spend a little more time on the sections that are more difficult for you to make sure that you're prepared for it. But, you know, again, the most important points here were the schedule, doing the three hours a day for five weeks. Now, anyone can really do that. If you're watching this video wondering how you're going to set your schedule or how you're going to pass the Series 7, just be realistic about it. Treat it like a second job. You know, a lot of people work two jobs. Um, so get home from your regular job and treat studying for only six weeks or maybe two months like a second job. It's, it's not that long of a period of time to have to sacrifice a little bit to be able to pass an exam that hopefully should give you some really improved career prospects or just help you out in your current role. And then shortly after the seven, you take the series 66. That one was a little bit easier yet than the seven. I, I don't think I'll make a separate video about that. It's gonna be the same principles that I talked about here, which is just set a schedule, go through your study material that you provided, make sure you're learning it all and uh, go in confidently take the exam and pass. If anyone has any other thoughts about the Series 7 exams, what they did or uh, what other people could do differently, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for watching.